morning. Let's see, we have me co-host spotlight video. Okay. Do we? Okay, we have, yeah, we have an audience. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Um, okay. Well, a lot has gone on. We have a president-elect, hopefully a lot of the last four years. Uh, it's not behind us, but we start to look forward as opposed to whatever. So um, I thought what I'd do today, I have a couple of questions. David is somebody who would answer this a little bit more. Um, yeah, uh, yeah th th this is a book that I thought about, you know, something that we, I thought we could explore, okay? And what it is, uh, I think it was a gift. I think actually, uh, I think Hikizuchi Sensei kind of gave this to somebody who was coming back to America to give to me, so I... I, I so many years ago, I, it, it was not signed or anything, so I don't know. But, but it is a book, and it's, it's an instructional book, okay? It really is line drawings. This was, uh, uh, I think, pre-war, pre-World War II, uh, and O-sensei had a student in his class, uh, a woman an artist, and she was apparently one of the top students. We're not talking about, you know, whether there was male or female, she was one of the very top students. And so what he did do was he commissioned her on some basis to, uh, you know, do a series of sketches about the movements. And it was assembled in a book uh, with very limited circulation. In other words, if you really thought you were at a certain level, what happened is he'd give you the book. It was almost like a teaching certificate, okay? And so uh, this book now, um, I looked at it from time to time, and it's fascinating. It, the drawings are, Okay, now one of the things about it is that you have to have a certain feel in order to connect the dots. If you don't, then why does this go to the next illustration? Okay, and so one of the things I thought we'd open with. Uh, so David, uh, I have a question for you. Um, I don't know how to do it. But I'd kind of like to start bringing in some of the pictures or the, the drawings and taking people through a process, how to quote unquote connect this frame to that frame to that frame. See, these days it's like, okay, everything's on video, everything, but, but no sense that he commissioned that and How does this connect to this, connect to that? And I, especially a couple of them, they're fascinating. Can you fill in the sketches? Okay. Uh, is it possible? I, I know it's possible to put like photos or pictures on Zoom screens. Is that something I can do or we can do on this end from the office computer or on my iPad? Is that something we can do? You can put the pictures on. Uh, getting the pictures from the book into the computer is really the only step that's... Well, I've done this before, which is you, you take a photo of the, of, of the drawing and you load that onto the uh, computer. I mean, I can't do it really in the iPad. I can then load it on the computer and email it to my iPad, in which case I have it here. I know you can uh, share the screen on a computer, but I don't know about the iPad. Do you know, David? Yeah, no, I, I, I thought what we'd have to do is really do it from the computer. So and if just, what I yeah. would do is I would get the pictures, I would I would set them up, say, in, in 
on the computer in the order that you wanted to show yes. them. And then okay. you or Elle could go to the computer, share the screen, and then just pick each picture that you wanted to show. Yeah, I thought, I thought that would be a fascinating thing because, you know, there, there's an area where, uh, one thing that's very obvious, this is like pre-war. And what, what, what happened is the Aikido that's really taught, if you watch O Sensei on video, especially even if you watch the 1935 stuff, um, the Aikido that's sort of been kind of brought into the public eye, you know, is, is really a form. And there's certain things that, that, for example, if you watch him, you might kind of, okay, now this is something we'll do for the general public. But one of the things that there in the pictures, you're forced to, really, how does this photo go to this photo or this sketch go to that sketch? And sometimes, you know, there, it's quite an exercise. Uh, one, one show that we watched over the weekend, just to maybe get a little bit of distance from the uh, election, which was, believe it or not, even for me, all consuming was uh, a Netflix show called Queen's Gambit. And this is about uh, a woman who started very young as an orphan playing chess. And one thing I found really fascinating about it is that what she would do, she was very young and then she kind of goes to the basement where the janitor is and he's playing chess all the time when he's not working. And so she starts to interact with him and he basically teaches her the game. But at night, she's lying on her back and looking at the ceiling and she sees the chessboard and the chess pieces. In other words, it's not just enough to go out there and learn how the pieces move and play. But she has this capacity to see the chessboard, okay? And there are pieces, okay? So um, I thought, for example, you know, the line drawings, one of the reasons though, since it may be formatted this way, if it was, there are photos of him, Right, which are also interesting to study. You know, uh, especially one period, and they call the Noma Dojo period, where he's, you know, there are good photos of him, but the line drawings for me are, are more fascinating because he chose this woman. She wasn't just a great artist. She was one of the absolute top students at that time. I really don't know what happened to her, okay? But, you know, she's sort of in history as, as the person who's, who did those sketches. But one, the girl does, isn't satisfied just with the energy you get by playing chess. She kind of takes it afterwards. And she can look up in the ceiling, see all the pieces and play just right there. And she, as she gets older, I mean, she just starts beating everybody. Um, and you know, something I've been mentioning lately is again, the, the warrior coach, Steve Kerr, said that really the thing he enjoyed the most was not winning titles, which he, as a player and also as a coach has won quite a bit, or games, he just said that it was watching people like Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant when he played for us after practice. How they're really going through, they're refining, their in, 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 a, in, in a word that, that is used in IQ life, they're forging. You know, a chess player is very different than, you know, 
Aikido's movement are. But the motion in chess is, is exaggerates kind of more the mental of it. But you have to have a certain conviction in other words to, you can't just see. And, and what I kind of thought was kind of interesting was she kind of saw certain patterns. And so, you know, just the act of the young girl, very young, being able to, at night, when everybody else was just asleep, she was looking at the ceiling and seeing all the pieces. And um, I thought we would try something where we, when we get the technology down, you know, putting some of the photos on of various movements. Now, the, the really interesting ones are where one, two, uh, how'd that get there? So we don't really have the physical practice, but you know, the, the show is full of people who, you know, love chess and they play and they play and she goes right through them all. In fact, she doesn't know how good she is until she starts to be really top, top, top competitors. And then at the very top, the impenetrable wall of the Soviets and how she kind of builds up what she has to go through. She has to go through a bunch of stuff. Her, her mother was a top, very mathematically gifted. And she was also kind of emotionally unstable. And so she inherited a bunch of stuff that she has to work through. And part of the end of the series, which I won't spoil for everybody, is fascinating to watch because she keeps going, it's like the basement kind of represents. I mean, you're, 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 you're an orphan. You got, you're, you're supposed to go down into the dark, the basement where this weird guy is there. You know, the janitor. But she goes down there. It could represent her subconscious. And there's, this dour old man there that was probably very, very unfriendly initially. But she goes down there and wins him over. In the process of interacting with him in that deeper, darker space, she finds herself or she finds her genius, that which kind of propels her forward. And she finds out as she gets older that that's great. Most people don't have that or we have it, but it stays dormant. She follows it. And I think Osensei was maybe somewhat like that, except, you know, he, did he play chess? I don't know. Did he play uh, some of the Japanese equivalents of chess? I don't know. Like I, I, I played or tried to play, you know, that was, a lot younger. For me, it was just, I was just bored. I wanted to move. I wanted to see relationships in motion. And so I used to have this high school friend and we went to college together in Santa Cruz. And he used to just demolish me playing chess. It's like, I just did not have the patience at that time to see the whole board without the board. Okay. And, you know, uh, Nado Sensei and I, you know, we, we meet, uh, actually maybe these days, phone, not, not, not actual physical, physical meeting, right? Which we did for almost, uh, basically maybe it was about 10 years. You know, sometimes as many as three times a week, you know, we just go over Oh, Sensei. And what if various aspects that the Aikido was like a chessboard, the universe was like a chessboard? Can you see it? 
when it's not there. What are the major pieces of that board game that's the universe? Certain things like their center. I mean, if your king is taken, you lose. On the other hand, the king is it's not your most potent piece. In fact, the king is to be protected. He has certain mobility. And you have a queen. It's actually a lot more potent than the king. And you have all these strategies like, you know, the sacrifice the queen in order to win the game, which is counterintuitive because that's your most powerful piece, right? And then you have the, the knight who can create all these corner moves. You can go over and around, whereas everything else is either this way or this way, all right? And you have the use of the pawns. Like, well, so you have a center. You have your king-queen balance. Yin-yang, light door, fire, water, heaven and earth. And you have various other pieces that move and have various powers. The bishop can move diagonally. So I know what the pieces do. I, I could not for my life ever, ever get the discipline at that time to actually sit down and engage mentally that way. I absolutely could not. And so you have a couple of things. The rooks go this way, all right? So, you know, you have your, let's just say, you have your center. You have a balance, yin yang, king queen. You have various allies. And you have the board, you have a space. The other thing is you have time. In other words, usually there's a sense where you can't play forever. And so, being able to, what we try to do, what Nadeau Sensei and I try to do, we, 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 we don't call it chess, but okay, there are various pieces. The universe is like a chessboard. And there are certain archetypes, the archetype of a center, the point, or the column. The two parent forces, king, queen, And then you have basically the, the kami. And you know, you can divide that into, I don't know how many. Now the key thing, who's playing? Their self. Funny on who I am. It's like, I, 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 I was just, yeah, I mean, this high school friend of mine, he would just beat me. Absolutely beat me because he, he could engage mentally and I, I was more like, I want to move. If I didn't have the patience to sit and sort of visualize, feel, not just think, but visualize, feel. That's what the young girl did. She could visualize, feel the chessboard. And what was kind of an interesting thing throughout was she was brilliant. What she saw was quick and intuitive. And so she beat people really very quickly. She had what they call the short game. She was so brilliant, I go, oh, I turned the king over, you won. Most, most of them were pissed off. But she starts to do that with top competitors. But when she faces the Soviets, this is, we're talking in the late 60s to early 70s, so I mean, it was a different world then. 
She doesn't know how to play the long game. And so, especially against the top Soviet player, he stretches the game out. And the longer the game goes, the more she is uncomfortable because she's so brilliant. She knows how to, the short game is attack. She just knows how to read, 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 very fast, faster than about anybody else. But she finds, you know, and somebody tells her stuff, look, the Soviets, they talk. They scout. They're going to tell their number one guy everything about how you beat them. And so it, it, it's a, uh, it is a, well, everything is that way. There, there, there's the, the short game and there's a long game. Okay. And there's, everything is right in the moment. Aikido is short game. You train. You, you learn the technique to develop your physical skills, uh, right? The long game, you realize, and this may, this is not for everywhere. Some people go the other way. There's a philosophy. See, the short game is fascinating because, you know, that's what's taken away from us right now. You know, you got your class. Well, there are no classes unless you happen to be socially distancing with somebody that you can actually interact with. Okay, there is no short game. Where to go? My keto class. Well, it's basically, we have this. This is more long game. What we're trying to do is visualize the chessboard. That's the universe. Understand that there are energies. Basically, there is a yin-yang, masculine, feminine, although at that level, it's nothing to do with gender. You're king, queen, queen, king. And there are various powers and forces. And their self, he or she, who's playing. Can we see the board? Not just when it's in front of us and we're playing. Do we understand the polarity? The basic yin yang, fire, water, whatever you want to call it. Do we understand the various powers at work? The pieces. And who's playing? Their self. Now the heaven and the earth of it is obviously, you know, you, you she had the ability to see the board looking up at the ceiling at night. Not just see, but see, visualize, feel. But she also, somebody has to move the pieces. And a lot of what made the show fascinating was not just seeing her develop as a chess master, but also how she dealt with a lot of the emotional issues she got from her mom that made her who she is. A lot of times really brilliant people. Oftentimes uh, they say, you know, insanity and, and genius are very close. And you start to kind of get that. And so, you know, it's called Queen's Gambit. It's number one on Netflix right now. And think about it for a second. It's a show about chess. 
If, if you were to stick me in front of a chessboard and actually go, okay, I know what I do. But what we had in Shingu, um, most of Shingu really was being able to visualize the chessboard, the universe, understand the training was more than just learning technique. The training was understanding, you know, the basic yin yang, yin, you know, the queen, king and queen of the universe, whatever you want to call it. And the various powers are coming. And then there were these chess matches, which you had when you were training, a short game. But the long game was who am I? Who am I? The heaven, the earth of it. And it's interesting that the, the people that teach her the long game are the people that she beats initially. She's so brilliant. They can't get to the long game. They have a much better knowledge of chess, although she's, she reads and studies. But they start to kind of say, okay, you need to develop this. If you're gonna face the Soviet masters, the wall. So it's fascinating that, you know, you, you can do this with anything, you with basketball. You can do this with chess. You can do this with music. Uh, from what I understand, uh, Chet Baker was an excellent chess player. And I can see that. I mean, I, I, you know, there's an area where you're, you're looking in music about, you know, you have various measures, you have various beats, and you also, you have a, a scale of notes and how you fill those beats within the measures with the topography and the in the moment feel of the notes, very much like chess. I don't know if that would be any better. I like moving in music is breath, vibration, sound. But you know, there's a certain area where you're, you know, da, 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 da. you're feeling the notes. A lot of times, I, I don't know where I am, but this note, and I lose it sometimes where I go, well, where am I? Which case, you know, the, the whole flow stops, but, and that to me is a lot like what, what Stephen Curry does on the basketball court or Kevin Durant. And so if we can start to visualize the chessboard, the universe, start to work on the basic yin yang, light dark, fire water, not in gender terms, masculine, feminine. We start out as a center, these forces start to move The board goes out and there are various energies or powers. And then it's all just right in front of us right now. You know, Sensei's thing was basically, what is it? There's a design to creation, the chess board. There's the harmonious movement of energies based on the original of the king queen through various powers and forces. There's an overlying design to the universe and an overlying harmony to these forces. And there we are, both as a character, he or she who plays that game. And though since this game, it was Aiki. It was universal harmony. And if you look at the world, I mean, obviously, uh, if you know me, 
I'm pretty happy about, you know, the results of the election. But there are certain situations now, like, like, you know, the climate issues. Social imbalance along racial lines. Economic imbalance, too much at the top, very little at the bottom. And chaos in the middle here. And what I'd like to see right here is, you know, the president-elect, the vice president-elect, you have a king-queen balance that we've never really had before. You've had candidates for vice president that were uh, feminine, but the very first vice president-elect. There's still a lot of chaos in the country. So the job initially will be somehow getting the pieces in order, realizing in some sense that the game here is not about beating, if you're black beating white or white beating black. And I'm talking not about racial lines totally, but creating this harmony. That's the game in Aikido. You know what I thought was interesting about the uh, TV show, Queen's Gambit? A lot of the people she beats, they go, they're angry. They're kind of like, I'm not going to consume The really good ones go, congratulations. That they're, they realize genius. And, uh, you know, oftentimes you say, well, I'm smarter than you, so I'm going to win. That's not the game. The game is, is really here, you, know, you, you get the, the, you know, basically you get the black pieces and the white pieces. Uh, you know, you want to basically have the first move, which is white, but that, that changes. Depending on the game, you, you may come, you know, you're, Choose, oh, okay, oh, I lost, okay, so you're white. I'm, I'm, I'm in the black pieces, okay. Or conversely, you win, so you get the first move. The first move, the first move. But then there's so much else, you know, then everything gets complex. But maybe that first move. Establish yourself as the center. Understand the basic polarity of yin yang forces. Line up to the pieces, the various powers, the kami, that are there to assist you. Create yourself as a player, not a, a spectator. And then black, white. We're creating a harmony together. And be able to look up or interiorly feel the universe as that chess game. And victory is a mutual one for us. And that, that makes it fascinating. So anyway, if we're going to go into the other room and um, uh, David, uh, maybe after class, uh, we can talk a little bit about how to put the pictures on the screen. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So um, anyway, um, as I, I said, you, know, you got to get your mind off of the election. So we started watching. Queen's Gambit. So if you haven't seen it, it's got a lot of notice. It's like I don't know, for example, if Stephen Curry would be an excellent chess player. Might work against him. But the ability to visualize the whole court, what 
you have 10, you have 14 minutes, and you have the other team, five. And if you're too egotistical, no, you're brilliant, you're playing four on five. So to integrate, so it's five on five. And a great player like, like, like Steph or LeBron, they have a magnetism that draws the attention. So two people on here, what does that mean? Then it's four of yours against three of the other team. Now, this is basketball, but I watched a little bit of the, uh, the Curry master class, and he basically would, would explain positioning, how just this influences that, and how, why this person in that position allows him to go to the hoop because it's Clay Thompson, his man cannot leave him if Curry beats his man. Or conversely, why he can do this because somebody is guarding Draymond Green at the three-point line much more than they should, which creates the opening for them. And how we can read all of that, right, in the game flow. So basketball is, is, is a bit like chess. I mean, Aikido, if we look at it, probably has a chess-like aspect to it. Okay? So anyway, let's go into... And we usually set this up with lights. So let's there's a bunch of stuff that got moved around in here. So we are So what we're really doing right here is we're setting up the chessboard, all right? And I brought this in because it, it tends to be easier here. I am. Uh, the Do Sensei said, Oh, Sensei had a prayer stick. But he could use that. Um, as a staff or spear, or he could use it as a sword. Boom, 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 boom. So when I use this, I still have to watch various things. But if I was using a longer staff, uh, even swinging a, a bokken, I collide with things. Okay. Now, let's see. We will change the angle of the camera. So we get a full body shot. Okay, so we're just you know, right now just you could kind of say I'm messing around, and I kind of am right here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now, what do we have right here? We have, you know, basically we have, this is one of the major pieces. Okay. This is one of the major pieces. This is one of the major pieces. Okay. Boom. And this is one of the major pieces. This is interesting because this is open checkmate. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And these are major pieces. 
thumb down from the top, thumb up from the bottom, right? Figure eight. Thumb down from the top, thumb up from the bottom. Figure eight. Right, so the fire water changes. So, you know, if we look at Aikido, you gotta learn techniques like, okay, the pieces on the chessboard move a certain way, okay? And that's kind of what you call your, your short game. And then there's also, you know, a long game. In other words, and then if you can, boom, pierce to the truth right there, boom, boom, checkmate. And there are various energies or forces like right here where one of the major pieces on the chessboard as Aikido is called breath. And you can also say there's a basic king queen nature to it. Now, boom, and there are other pieces that come out of that. So I encourage you right now, just kind of move around a little. Get the feel of the flow where the changes just start to. And I like the shorter staff for inside because it uh, allows me to move a bit more freely. You know, if I got a long staff, I hit the ceiling. Now, if I sort of check me, I'm much more now in body feel. Feel my, not the body as one rigid movement or the idea of body. Boom, boom. Hips are there, base, ground are there. It's a basic pulse to things, and aliveness, and boom, out of that we have boom, there are shapes and forms. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. okay, so right now, Ah, body's being looser, freer, and yet there's a nice, relaxed, flexible sense of ground. The movements are out there. I, I know how the pieces move. What's out there? Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, 
checking in a little bit. Uh, anybody else? I mean, you know, we, we kind of, uh, Aikido and chess are not the same, although on some levels, I mean, if you're going to be, they both come out of a design. A game is, has to have a design to it. And there are rules, all right? There are rules in Aikido, all right? Any any questions or any observations? I like the metaphor of uh, watching the chess game on the ceiling where there's no board. I'm gonna. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking. I've been thinking about that and seeing where that gets me. Okay. Well. Um, yeah. I just you know it's like a chess master. What's the work of a chess master? Well, they play these tournament games. Um, but that's a very tiny percentage of their life. It's like a ballerina does a, performs a ballet, but that's a very tiny percentage of her life. Mostly she's practicing, right? And what she's practicing might not have anything to do with the choreography of a given ballet. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess what it is, I really, yeah, go on. I really like the metaphor. This is Audrey. I watched that Queen's Gambit and just had to binge it. I couldn't stop watching it. Yeah, um, no, it was, it was but gross. One, one thing that occurs to me is her life was so isolated with just this one skill. And what makes Aikido so powerful and different is we can practice our skill and then apply it to all the situations in, in our lives. You know, yeah. and yeah. So, or you apply this as a metaphor that just expands it to Aikido to have more application for me. Yeah, if you, for example, were to look at, uh, if Aikido were a metaphor for everything, the theory of everything, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, uh, it, there's social levels or economic levels or, you know, world's full of problems, right? And, you know, to, to really, uh, everything, however, has a pulse. You know, when, when, when everything's like this, everything's too chaotic, but if you start to calm down, that basic pulse of the basic, you know, king, queen, polarity, and yang, right? And when it's this way, it's just too complex. With me, it was kind of like, ah, I know how the pieces move, but boy, I'm bored here. <laughs> you couldn't get me to sit down and really focus on, on, on you know, what my uh, then opponent was, this friend of mine who was of Russian descent. We grew up together at the same high school. He was brilliant in, in math and science. I mean, he wound up, you know, being research uh, physicist at UC Berkeley. And uh, he was, uh, you know, I mean, you know, he just absolutely killed me. It was like, I just wasn't there at all for that stuff. But the Aikido, for example, you know, you learn boom, 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 you have, like, for example, the staff has one and two, has had two ends, doesn't it? And also, uh, the, those two ends move off of the center, don't they? And then, you know, as we keep going, and what happens there are variations that come out of that. Boom, 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 boom. All right? And so uh, for me, you know, this is all pretty much just intuitive. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So I, you know, I mean, this is where I like to be. I'm not sure I'd be any good at all staring at a chessboard trying to move pieces. Right. I mean, it's just my, my, my particular interior sense, although I kind of like the metaphor. And what happens if you, well, I, let's not give the, the ending of it. Is, is it what you're talking about, you know, about Aikido and social aspects and applications of it? Um, there's some of that comes in at the end without giving the end away. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, anybody else with a question or observation or anything? Mm. 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 Okay, uh, 
then what I'm going to do, I think we went a little bit into the, the phantom swordsman of Sensei encountered during the World War II years when he was in Iwama. His training, all of a sudden, the phantom image of himself comes up. You know, sword, you know, Bokan to Bokan. I'm sure it wasn't a real sword, you know. And, um, Ah. Initially, he can't do anything. It's a phantom image of himself, can't do anything. Then he starts to hold his own. Then he starts to anticipate the movement of the phantom. Boom, boom, boom. And after he does that, he says the phantom disappears and he feels the whole universe in his body. Ah, a whole chessboard. The center. The fire water forces. The kami. All inside him. So what eventually uh, or initially was an opponent led to realization that was very profound, not just a realization, but a realization. Okay, so one of the things in, in chess, you know, you have an opening move. If you watch a lot of both senses opening moves, it's an opening movement. You know, mm -hmm. he opens himself up. But when he opens himself up, all of a sudden, boom. Mm -hmm. He opens himself up, but then all of a sudden, or sometimes he opens the sofa and then he goes for a walk. A lot of his uh, opening moves are inviting the uke. In other words, even here, okay, this is an opening. But the opening motion, boom, right here, there's an opening. Okay. Right here, there's an opening. Okay. Right here, there's an opening. Okay, boom. I mean, if you're here, quickest target is the leg of somebody coming in. But you can move back, then you can carry around, and if that person pulls back, you enter. Now what I'm starting to do a little bit is visualize the chessboard and the pieces. Now there is no phantom me, except that, you know, there is whatever I represent, kind of a not an opposite, but a complementary. If somebody's coming with a variety of different moves, maybe, you know, this is a long game, long game until boom, checkmate. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So everything starts to open up. Now the universe itself has a harmony with itself. Well, since they realized, you know, in some sense, initially, you know, maybe he was a player on that board. A knight. Boom, boom, boom. A bishop. Boom. A rook. <laughs> huh? Various skills. Huh? But at some point he realized he was the person who was playing the game, you know, from one side, light or dark. Then he realized the game was universal and he was both the light and the dark, right? The phantom of himself. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Like right about here, for example, there's a pulsar beat. He's me opening to that. The opening is to the wrist and there. Beat one, two, three. But there's an opening for that. So um, when I read that, I just started to realize a lot of what I tend to do is, you know, there's always a phantom. 
there's always a phantom. You know, the game uh, of sensei play, but a lot of it is okay. There's a recovery here. Somebody's coming at you. There's a recovery that leads to a larger, more opening space. Things get tight, they open up. Likewise, you know what happens is things open up, boom, they focus or get tighter, boom, boom. And so I'm training myself to realize I'm a player. Okay, so I'm either white or black. But then as we keep going, you're both. When you're both, guess what? You can't lose. But there is movement, there's strategy. Boom, 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 boom. But ultimately, for example, my right hand, who's going to win, my right hand or my left hand? Boom. Ah, they're working together as a team. Boom, 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 boom. Take the wrist, get out of the way, cut. Take the other wrist, get out of the way. Now come in, take underneath the arms. So we just did a variation of what Osense, what, what Hikizuchi Sensei quoted Osensei as Sho Chikubai. Okay? And um, there was a, an article today about a mayor in uh, Japan. And his name was a certain something, but if you go to the characters, by plum, den, field. The characters are within plum, field. So it actually, the reading of his name could also be by den <laughs> or president elect. I thought that was kind of cute. Okay. And so, you know, there sometimes is an obvious reading, but then there's a hidden reading. Oh my gosh. If you read my, my name that way and that way, it's the same as the president elect. Cool. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Now, but all those movements, you know, I can just be moving, but all of a sudden, see somebody's coming to cut, well, you move to the side, slash under, take the wrist. Like we go back, back, put your covenant, and boom, then you enter. There's a particular place where you are sitting on one side of the chessboard, but who's on the other side of the board is you. Okay. If you're a little late, you, you, know, you move up and you adapt it. Short game, long game. And then maybe when you're lying down at night, you're st staring at the ceiling, you, you, you don't just see, but you see, feel the board. Okay? And so when Osensei said, once he started to anticipate the moves of the phantom, the phantom disappeared and he felt the whole universe inside him. It was going on, the game itself was entertaining. And this uh, young woman, she beats everybody local. It's really funny that, that they become her fans. Instead of thinking, oh, uh oh. They realize that she's got a gift, right? And what happens sometimes is when you pursue that gift, uh, sometimes you can not develop other dimensions of yourself. Okay. I'm sure so good at boom, the short game, that, you know, when, when it was a long game, she, she did, got, would get confused. After, but at the end, boom, she can handle the long game, boom. So I like sometimes, you know, because uh, we don't have a training partner. For me, the actual partner 
or beats of energy going up means the wrist is open. Now, opening here allows that person, because you're not really cutting, to come in with that string. Now, right about there, there may be another up, boom, and there's that to the other side. Now, somebody may try to stress under that, but you can deflect, you know, and take wrist. Mm. All right. And after a while, you know, I had this discussion with the docent about it. He likes every, uh, to make everybody feel like a fool, which just is one of his more endearing characteristics. So I'm talking about this. Is what are you missing, Jack? Well, after a while, you know, the, the actual changes in the phantom that you're working with represent different forces that are not oppositional, they're allies. Boom. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, you know, just within, just standing this way. You're in the middle of a universal movement of chess pieces, the kami. As the center with a perfect balance of black and white, king, queen, masculine, feminine, yin, yang, fire, water. And it's a, you know, it's a harmony, boom. It's a boom, 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 boom. Boom. So on that level, I, I find a lot of that stuff to be fascinating. Anyway, we are at the one o'clock time. So uh, we're gonna go back into the other room and uh, see if anybody has any uh, thing to add. So we'll come on. Ooh, we'll switch. Okay. Anybody with a an observation, I mean, you know, we're, we're kind of using, we, we sort of use the, the Netflix show Queen's Gambit in chess and to try to maybe communicate certain things about Aikido and what we can do during this uh, pandemic. Anybody with a, a, a question? Uh, see, for me, what, what Osensei was doing with the Phantom Swordsman, the image of himself, okay, he was seeing the chessboard when there was no chessboard. There was another level of himself that he hadn't reached yet. It seemed oppositional and unbeatable. But he hung in there with it. Got equal to it. As he got equal to it, all of a sudden, there was no opponent anymore. He felt the universe inside his body. He didn't say inside his head. Obviously, if it's in your body, you're in the feel sense of it. So anybody with a question on that or some of the chess stuff, which I said, I am a horrible chess player. I absolutely do not have the patience. to play that game. Anybody with a question or comment? If you haven't seen it, I mean, hey, it was a great post-election escape. <laughs> All right, so if you're kind of following everything, you know, just like this, all of a sudden, you go, that's pretty fascinating, right? Well, you know, it relates to the election, right? Because Biden has done checkmate, but or uh, checkmate yeah. in 10 moves, right? But Trump refuses to lay his king down. He wants to play to the bitter end. Yeah. I mean, one thing you get from the, the show is the real champions you want. There's an area where, good. 
you didn't really win. I don't want to lose to a, a young American. I'm, I'm 42 years old and I'm the, the chess grandmaster of the Soviet Union. You can't beat me. Yeah, I was an oversight then. No, you won't. And if, you know, there's an area where too much winning is a weakness. She lost a couple of times until she kind of healed enough to win the long game. And yeah, there's an area where I know, I mean, if you're a bad loser, that means you can't handle losing, which means it doesn't matter how many times you win, you're a loser. It's, you know, this for win-lose, right? It's, it's, they're, they're kind of like two different things. Uh, loss, defeat, is kind of like the downtime. So since they land of the roots, he was maybe so good that the only person that could beat him was himself on a different level. So all of a sudden, the, this, this image comes to him. And for him, it wasn't just in his head. It was actually, he was, he was fencing with himself the next level of himself. And when he hit that level, it was a major level because there was no opponent anymore. You see, now that to me is a real teaching tool. It's a real teaching tool. So yeah, the, the whole thing about not being able to concede is a weakness. It's a weakness the country has right now because we're so obsessed with winning. Anybody else or any more, Cliff? It occurs to me that the long game in Aikido is really different. We had a old sensei, old, older sensei named uh, Peter Ting, who was 90 when I was in my 20s. Yeah, I remember Peter. Yeah. And uh, he would say to us young bucks, don't don't work out so hard you'll regret it when you're older don't you know you don't want to do what I did and and have all these joints arthritic and you know we thought we'd live forever and and so the nice thing about looking at Osensei is that he knew how to work out hard and was able to maintain it through age so the long game becomes how can I maintain this my whole life well Osensei yeah uh... Actually, I, my sense of it is he is one with the universe. That's the long game. You know, I, I mean, uh, th there are various personal goals that we sort of have, you know, short term goals. I mean, when, when Linda Holiday Sensei and Mary Heine Sensei and I were in Japan, what were the, the short term goals? Well, one was just to train because it was, uh, at the time, it was a good training situation. But Mary Sensei, she was in Nidong, got it from home, but she was, she was going to be given Sandan when she left. Both Linda Sensei and myself, we were showed on candidates, and it was somewhat that we were going to get promoted when we left. The short-term goal, even though it wasn't a great one, was to get your rank or your next rank. <laughs> Right? You know, I mean, it was, yeah, it was a, a short-term goal. And uh, that part of it, but, but the long game, because now we're, what, uh, over four decades past that period, well into the fifth decade. So the long game, where's the long game? Well, I think the long game is, you know, everybody understands it uniquely. It's what uh, Carl Jung called individuate. But Osensei had the advantage, he was one with the universe. So in our own way, we start to understand there's a greater unity. And I, I think Osensei probably, in ways that we don't even understand, probably trained a lot harder than anybody else. But he had the support of the universal forces 
And so, you know, the, the actual sense of it is just that everybody's got a body to train and a spirit to polish. I think he, yeah, I agree with you. I think as he got older, obviously, how he treated his body was very different. And some things he did, uh, I think, if we tried to do them, would be very difficult, like, um, cut down 700 trees in one season in Hokkaido. Apparently, that was, so, yeah, but you know, most of us would wreck our shoulders doing that. But somehow, you know, he was infused with his energy that he didn't quite maybe know the source of. So that supported him. And by the time he, you know, basically could be reaping the punishment of that, he had sort of achieved a totally different state of body and spirit where that didn't matter anymore, right? That's what I find so powerful about what you're teaching. And I'm sure that people that are older have had the opportunity to do a demonstration like myself. They always used to say, well, you know, when he'd step on the mat, you couldn't know, you didn't notice he was feeble. Well, I've yeah. got... I got knee replacements and I did a demo one time and you don't notice your body sometimes if you're lucky in the middle of that. But what I'm finding is that the exercises with that Joe are bringing and, and your explanation are bringing my body to that level where yeah. it can go beyond itself. Yeah, there are certain things, you know, that, that I absolutely can't do anymore. You know, like there's a lemon tree outside where I stay. And, you know, the, 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 there are lemons, you know, they're coming in pretty high, right? And I used to be able to, to, to jump. I can't do that anymore. Um, when my daughter was playing in high school, you know, I was in my 40s, which isn't that young, but it's also not decrepit old. I could do things like, you know, you're in midair on one side, you go under the basket, then you go like that. I could do that. I couldn't do that absolutely to save my life now. But I have the ability to do certain things. My game is not my, you know, I mean, it wasn't Michael Jordan, but you would just say, oh, Michael, you know. And, um, but, you know, my game would be much more stiff and Curry's game, you know change of direction, step back, attack, finish with an angle. Uh, and yeah, he can still go from one side of the basket in midair to the other. Yeah, he's, he's, but then again, he's 40 years younger than I am. But there are things I can do better now because my own system is much more integrated than it was when I was in my 40s. And in my 40s, I was doing stuff I couldn't do when I was 18 or 17, like that, you know, because nobody in those days was going from one side of the basket to the other in midair and finishing. But you see Michael Jordan, you go, oh yeah, you know? So it's, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, certain things, if, if you keep developing, you, you develop new skills to play, to, to, to replace old skills that may have kind of gone with the, with the winds of sands of time, so to speak. And there's no way uh, I could make a half court shot, you know, when I was, you know, basketball playing age, but pretty much a half court shot. I mean, I, I, I was, you know, and not just throw the ball, but a, an actual jump shot. Because Stephen Curry was doing it all of a sudden, you know, I started to realize, you know, that everything is triggered from the core. Boom, boom. You know, it's not like, boom, 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 boom. And that's kind of breath, heart, boom, 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 right? And then, you know, certain techniques kind of come out of that. So, you know, being Uke, I could not do as uke what i could have done years ago but as nage you know there's certain things i i understand now not just understand but understand and feel that that i you know didn't understand years ago so you replace skills as they diminish with new skills so that's probably what you're finding you know with your knee replacement and the movement of the staff 
if you keep doing that, then, then hey, you, it sounds like you're growing, didn't it? So, yeah. I mean, it's not, we're, we're not going to be young forever. One time, Ano Sensei, you know, we used to talk about this in 1970 something. And so there we are uh, at one of Linda Holiday Sensei's retreats. Uh, and I said, you know, way, way back then when we were training together, I thought by the time we were this age, uh, we wouldn't notice it because it'd be like O Sensei, you know, and he laughed. He just kind of just cracked up. He says, you know, but on the other hand, you know, you accept certain things. But ideally, we're growing in other areas. You know, I watch this movement, you know, I say, wow. You know, I would watch him sometimes, you know, where he would have one of those Linda Holiday Sensei students attack him, and he would sort of start his breath ki way before, and then, boom. And sometimes you know, he'd start that breath ki and boom, an explosion of energy out of that ki The guy would go flying even though his hands didn't move or his physical position didn't. And you could see the actual exchange of energy. So I said, wow. So I kind of kidded him. I said, hey, you're looking more and more like O Sensei, you know. And he just froze. And he gave me a long lecture about how, you know, okay, Jack. You know, you said that pretty lightly, but it scares the crap out of me. And he said, if I were going to be that, I'd have to train in a way that I don't feel like human anymore. And he says, you, if you're ever going to get there, then all this other stuff you're doing, you'd have to kind of quit and just focus on. I went, whoa, because it touched the nerve in him. And, you know, there's an area you want to say, I could have said, boy, you're looking great. I saw that ki you gathered all that energy and it exploded in a loving way and, and you're okay, you didn't even touch or do a technique and the guy went flying. But I brought O Sensei in and for him, O Sensei was up. In a lot of ways, what O Sensei is kind of like, okay, and I will admit it, and this is probably Ano Sensei or Nado Sensei or anybody who knew O Sensei. He's like the Russian so or the Soviet Grandmaster in uh, Queen's Gambit. In other words, until she finds herself fully or fairly fuller, he's a wall. And so what happened with Ano Sensei, he got very emotional there that I would even insinuate in a half joking way that he was becoming more and more like O Sensei. But it was obvious to people. You know, his last visit, he was just doing, I mean, I mean he's older. One level is he couldn't necessarily move the way that, you know, I would watch him and he's just very graceful, very expansive and loving and beautiful and really incredibly fun to work with. And then, you know, I'd watch him, you know, when he was coming out and he, he was having trouble walking because, you know, his, you know, his body had aged and he's also probably jet lagged and everything. And, you know, he would start to just with sound and breath and, you know, he, he, his movements were very, very, very expansive and very economical at the same time. And I would feel before he ki all this energy coming in. Boom. One time, I, probably the last, he used to throw me around a lot when he first started coming to the States. You know, I used, I used to be his number one UK. The first thing in the 90s, I, I was the person who invited him. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I met these, and I'm the one that's kind of being thrown around and everything. Everybody thought it was kind of funny because I was, you know, the, at the time, a rather major teacher, right? And then all of a sudden, they throwing me around. But it was an honor. It was an honor. You know, he came here and he didn't, didn't have his grounding here. So I was the first, I was just kind of his go-to guy. If he was a basketball player, I was, I was the one that he was going to get the ball to. I was the two And then, you know, Linda Holiday Sensei uh, started inviting him. And then I would still be up a lot. But I remember uh, when, I see if I, I have it online, I mean, I have it on my computer. 
I'm not, I'm not supposed to do it because there was an agreement that you weren't supposed to photograph, that the, the retreat was being photographed by uh, you know, certain Aikido of San Jose, I mean Santa Cruz students. But one of my students shot this thing of me and Ano Sensei. All right, it was just, he calls me in, he's throwing a bunch of people, he calls me in. And what's real interesting right there is, you know, he starts the circle like he's gonna throw me forward. But right at the top, there's a big wave reversal. Oh, huh. So, you know, it's almost like, you know, like you're gonna get somebody in Kota Gaishi, well, they're stretching out, and all of a sudden at the top of the wave, the whole wave exponentializes and reverses. And you get this, you get, get a lot of the throws that Osensei does in 1935. But, you know, I'm just going in there, right? And he's got me in this, this wheel here, and I'm ready to go this way. And then right at the apex, the counter force comes in. And I remember this like it was yesterday. That's the whole thing. If you are in the moment with it, all of a sudden he picks me up and I become Spider-Man. And I start walking up this wall, literally. I'm taking steps up this wall and he gets this incredible lift and then I go splat. And in that moment, I just, you know, because I, I, as I said, he wasn't supposed to do it. That's why I haven't posted it. <laughs> but, uh, in fact, I don't know, maybe if I post it now, I get in trouble. I, I, I have no idea. I have to talk to Linda Sensei about it. But I'm going right for him. I'm going this way. And all of a sudden, right at the apex of it, where I'm going to be thrown, the counter wave comes in fully, 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 and all of a sudden I start to horizontalize this way, then I start to verticalize. It's like I'm walking up an energy wall, honest to goodness, and then, oh. Now, those sensei really talks about this one throw where, you know, he just got his black belt. I mean, those days you get it a lot quicker. You know, but he trained four or five classes a day at Hombu Dojo. You know, I think it was like nine months or a year after he had started training there. And so O-sensei kind of says, Nado, which means in the o sensei says he's at his physical peak. Yeah, mid twenties, all right. So he goes in there like a shot, boom, everything. He's gotta know, he's seen all this energy seeing all this stuff, right? He knows it's real because he can feel the energy, but he's never felt it that directly. And so he says, he goes into those sensei, full power, he's gotta know. And so almost like those sensei kind of vanishes or something. And he's kind of in this energy field and he feels, you know, the, the field kind of rubberize. And then it electrifies and he gets thrown some incredible distance, but he doesn't feel like, you know, he's been tricked or somebody, or oh, since they have better technique. He doesn't feel like he's been hypnotized or uprooted like the Chinese arts do. He feels these gradations and shifts in the energy field. And I've heard other stories where the only physical contact he feels, this is Betsy Hill Sensei, is so Sensei touches him in his third eye. And he's thrown and he looks for a Sensei, he can't find him. And the Sensei is way across the room standing in his blind angle. And so, you know, there, there's usually a couple of throws or a couple of things where if you're present, there's still a live 
get it in your energy diary. Okay. But that sense right there, when Anu Sensei threw me at the, the Civic Auditorium in Santa Cruz, where I was climbing the wall like Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, wow. And, you know, Hikizuchi says that the, the one I like was, you know, where he's kind of giving this lecture. Okay. And, you know, I come attack him. He kind of comes in. He kind of does the thing where he pins me. You know, he's an Irimi Nagi set up. I know he's eventually, but he gives a whole lecture. And I'm kind of in this energy field to sort of, it's very loving and boom, I'm just being totally drawn into that point of contact there. And then, you know, he, you know the, the, the point he made, because I remember it, you know, that he says, you know, the martial arts, Budo, and their purposes for Budo must be made anew and born anew day by day. In other words, that's part of the Misogi. Well, this is the reason I'm training in Aikido, but on the other hand, that's fresh. If every day you find a new dimension to it. And, you know, then he really, there's something I still remember, it's always taken to heart. And he was talking about den, which is tradition. And he said, the den in Aikido, because of what he had said before, is take musi. It's creation, loving creation. And when he said that, then he comes and key eyes and his fist goes right towards my third eye and I go like flying like that. And I still have the memory of what it was like to be kind of suspended in that point in that energy field and everything, feel all the forces go there. And also, you know, to remember the words in Japanese and it was all one thing, the words, the experience, and um, things like that. There are certain things that, that are, you know, if you check your own experience, hopefully you have some. But those are the things that sustain you. And Tojima Sensei did a couple of things, you know, that, that you know, I could say, or Yonase Sensei did a couple of things. I remember certain throws, you know, that, 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 um, you know, for example, like Nado Sensei, you know, I'm just back from Japan and the old San Jose Dojo in Japantown, you know, uh, was inside. There was, you know, mat area, pretty extensive. Uh, and uh, the floors around the mat were concrete. And Nado Sensei is kind of teaching what he calls, you know, he was kind of doing beams. So he has me kind of grab his wrist like that. He goes like this. The next thing I know, I'm on the concrete. We were, I was trained right by the edge of the mat, but I don't feel the throw. I don't feel the energy pick me up or what the energy does. And I'm on, and the concrete felt like a feather bed. There was no sense of impact at all. Uh, you know, to somebody, I felt, you know, I used to, when I got back from Japan, and especially at the retreats, and uh, uh, I guess it was, uh, what was San Rafael, the more recent retreats, you know, where, where Nado Sensei was involved and Duran Sensei was in Menlo Park. And now I think it's uh, somewhere else, okay, Lake Tahoe or something. Because it's not being run by the people that used to run it. It's fine. I mean, I, I don't really have a connection. I tend to, when there are events, I, I do the O Sensei revisited with the Do Sensei. It's not that I don't want to do it. I just don't travel that much. Okay. And partially it's because, you know, what happens, it's good to do that. But also, there's that chess board. And sometimes if you're running around a little bit too much, you focus on the pieces. So. Different powers and who you are. So, you know, the, the Do Sense and I, we meet a couple of times a week and go over the chessboard and the pieces and who's playing. 
we do that a couple of times a week now. Now it's just phone call. It's not driving all the way to where we live. So it's a bit easier. Anybody with a question or comment? So if you haven't watched Queen's Gambit one, you know, you may want a little escape or distance from the election, which uh, I, I'm glad it turned out, at least at the executive level, the way it did. You may not be, I suspect most everybody here is, but it was tense. And so, you know, one thing that, that kind of, you know, sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you, you just got to do something, watch something. Because uh, if you keep it too this way, you you get too stale. So new images, new metaphors. That's where those, you know, but Hiki Zuchi Sensei share, right? Every day. Your martial art and the purposes for your training are forged anew. Every day, when you stare up at that ceiling and see the chessboard, it's new. That's a misogi. Anybody? Uh, uh, David, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm gonna just sort of close my iPad, but I'm gonna go over to the big screen. Okay, the one in the office. And if we could do a little bit on how we might be able to put the photos here. If you came in late, this is a book that O-sensei uh, had an artist sketch him. And the artist was one of his top students. It was a woman who was an artist. And she trained, she was not one of the, okay, it was, she was the top woman student. She was one of the top students of that period, which is pre-war. And these are line drawings of the movements. And what's fascinating is a, a lot of the stuff in there, you get, okay, one, two, three, but something a one, two, what? And there's four or eight, and you have to kind of be able to fill in what's not obvious. And so I thought what we'd do is maybe we can put some of these on the screen, which I don't know how to do right now. Uh, we, we can go, kind of walk through and, and look at maybe some of our sensitive stuff at the level of just the movement figures. How do you go from that to that? And we'll put it out to the group where you are involved in what will take it as a group problem. For warriors, how do we defend LeBron James? I mean, you know, in sports, it's uh, it's about winning over somebody. But here, uh, a lot of this is winning over our stagnation. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is, is that Osensei's movement is very different than what's more standardized Aikido through the Aikikai. The Aikikai is doing a good thing because, you know, uh, this stuff is very difficult. It's not obvious. It's giving you a rough eye line. And this book was presented to people he thought were ready for it. You had to have a certain level of development before you got this. And in those days, apparently, the awarding of this book, or a version of it, was pretty much an instructor's certificate. You got the book. I have a, a book that uh, I actually, um, Master Choi gave me, you know, which are photos of him. I still study that. Hmm. Huh. I have a, a little bit of video footage, and I still study that. Somebody asked Kevin Durant, you know, what do you do when you're not playing? He said, oh, I study. Well, what or who do you study? 
Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Larry Bird, a couple of others. Hmm. See, the grace. See the board there when there's no board. And, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. I mean, I don't think any of us are realistically going to get to the level of sensei, got to. But it is kind of fascinating to me to investigate what that level might have been like. Okay, so um, I'd like to be able to put some of these photos on the screen for the Zoom classes. We walk through them and I'll pick up a couple where it's not so obvious what's going on. And so it'll be up to you to move the chess pieces, okay, so to speak, to get from here to there. And That exercises things that are, you know, that are not obvious. Well, uh, Osensei's chessboard was a universe. Okay. And so I, I, I've always been fascinated by that. Absolutely fascinated. Anybody else before we go? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out on my pad and move because we have the office computer open and maybe have a conference with David. I, 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 this is not secret stuff by any means. So if you wanna hang around and talk and everything like that, it's perfectly fine with me. Okay, but anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Sensei. Thank, thank you, Sensei. Thank you, David. I'm gonna sign off. Good luck with the technology. <laughs> Likewise. Thanks, David. I'm signing off also. L, stop the recording.